Hi everyone, it's me Jojo and I'm so happy to be back after my next big break from my YouTube uploads. I've been so busy and I've got so much to talk about, I can't even wait. Today's video is going to be a catch up, I'm going to be sharing some new projects I've been working on and I'm also going to give you a bit of the behind the scenes. I also, because I'm celebrating my 15 years of working professionally this month, I really wanted to go through some of the old archive of videos, react to them so they're my own videos I'm giving some feedback on and also some behind the scenes stories. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm giving you a vision in blue today. Now I can't actually remember if I've actually done this blue jumpsuit on. I think I did it for a photo shoot for Agitprop and never brought it to YouTube. Do we know? Actually, I'm actually going to shuffle back a little bit so I'm not so close up. Is that better? A little bit better. So I have been really, really, really busy just doing so much more creative stuff. I've been working on a new masterclass because my masterclass with NYX went so well. If you didn't know, I have a six part masterclass series of tutorials that's on the Retrieve platform. And I gave you some creative ideas using all the colors from Pride. If you guys want to check it out, it's the top of my description. So check on that, totally free and easy to do. The next thing I'm gonna be doing, I think just before um, the end of September, I'm gonna be doing a ticketed masterclass. So I'm gonna be going through with 20 people. It's gonna be a 20 space slot. Cause what I'm gonna be doing is I'm actually giving you feedback in a live tutorial about what I would do if I was there doing your makeup. So, so much exciting stuff happening and I'll put all the details in my next video about that. So where have I been? Oh my God, there's been so many fun things happening. And um, my sister is pregnant, yay, I'm so excited. So my beautiful, beautiful niece, the light of my life, she is the best thing ever. And now there's gonna be a new baby on the way. So I can't wait to have two little ones to play with and spoil when we do our family days together. I've been spending a lot of time with my family because my sister just got married and I was so privileged to do her makeup. And it was, we, we were kind of going through a bit of a tense, couple of weeks before because me and my sister we're so close that sometimes we fight like sisters which is obviously what happens in families and we were just trying to get on the same page uh, i didn't know she was pregnant she kept it to herself but after the kind of aftermath of my granddad passing it was a bit of a tense scenario so i had to go through all of this sort of leveling to try and figure out what to do i spoke to family members i've not spoken to in eight years and all of this sort of like internal stuff that I guess never gets shown on the internet because it's got nothing to do with online. It's just things that I would deal with in my real life. Um, but good things and it's been really, really positive and I've really had such a lovely time. The wedding was a small wedding because obviously in COVID you can't have too many people in a small venue and we were all in masks and it was just beautiful and I recorded some amazing videos which if my sister allows me one day, I might be able to share, but we'll see. <laughs> so in addition to that, I actually got COVID and I was really, really, really sick. And this was two weeks before my sister's wedding. Everything had to be shifted slightly around the wedding because the entire family got it. Um, it was just a weird dynamic because some of us were really ill. I was really ill and I was prescribed penicillin, which was a mistake by the doctors. I didn't have any pain in my face apart from on one side and I thought it was an ear infection because I sometimes get vertigo and I feel a bit dizzy sometimes. Probably because I'm so tall and far away from the ground. But um, <laughs> I, I was really shocked because we had the penicillin and I just didn't feel that much better. So please be safe, be vaccinated and be totally aware of your um, safety precautions of traveling and socializing and just keep it kind of as safe as we can. Love to everyone out there though, because so many people have been going through this and it's just been horrible. I know one of my friends had the vaccine and was really ill from the vaccine, which I didn't expect. And I've got a surgery plan. So for me, it's like everything is just, it's a bedlam of confusion as per usual. <laughs> Talking of surgery, I'm gonna pop in the description my lovely Miri, um, who is getting top surgery, hopefully. If you wanted to donate to Crowdfund to that, please look in the links below. Miri is my baby. We have been friends for 100 years. I met them when I was possibly a teenager, maybe just in my 20s, I can't quite remember. But when they were very young and we've been friends and family friends ever since and um, was so excited to do an 18th birthday kind of meet up and just all this fun stuff. So um, I'm supporting them to, on their journey to find themselves through top surgery at the moment. So if you'd like to actually add to that fun, it would be great. So I have been so behind because of the COVID and the pregnancy and the death and everything that's been going on in my family. But my lovely friend Cola, she actually um, has released a brand new book. It's called Feminist Need Dick 2. It's a phenomenal book 
Cola is a prolific writer with an incredible story. She's been on my podcast, if you want to hear a little bit more about that. And she's mentioned me in the book. And I was so touched because she's been such a dear friend to me in various different times in my life. And we've become super close over the internet, which is really random because you, it's hard to do that in 2021. I think a lot of people... Um, just want to navigate through the world via memes. I, I like to have articulate conversations with people. So I'm so excited to be in Kyla's book. Please check it out. I'll add it to the links below. So for me, it's been a massive milestone this year because it's actually been 15 years of JH. Now I decided, um, because me and the Baron were talking about how I can celebrate my birthday and do something that really pays tribute and my whole project with Agiprop and the lockdown which is my wonderful lifestyle hub is I wanted to give you guys more insight into the person I am instead of actually giving you just tutorials where I teach people things um and thank god my archive is so powerful because the I think it's become almost like legend on YouTube like the Joseph Harwood makeup tutorials because every single time I see young trans people or I see drag people they're like oh my god I grew up watching you oh my god I grew up watching you oh my god I grew up watching you and I'm like my god this is so humbling and it was so important to me to keep things up even if I wasn't comfortable with how I looked in them or if I was going through something in my personal life and I didn't do a good job of the video just because I wanted people to still find them and if I'm not perfect all the time and I want people to realize that about me there's a whole different side of me that I never showed on the internet which is me being clumsy me being silly and I wanted to give the kind of like archive of maybe five years ago when I didn't have a huge studio or I didn't have everything I have today and just give like a bit more insight because it's fun to follow me now but you need to look at the backstory because that's how I got here <laughs> so I love it and it's really been an incredible opportunity because I got to celebrate everything I did and I got to round off everything and all the playlists are complete and all my projects are complete my website shows behind the scenes but one thing I didn't really show the behind the scenes of was my incarnations so I decided to do this look today because I call this the missing era um but it was almost like I wanted to go back to my core. I wanted to restart because I started doing The Mermaid in 2012 and it went on through 2013. I really wanted to do a new version of The Mermaid in 2016. As a lot of you know, and I'm not going to go into it in this video, there was an incident that happened to me. And actually at the end of May in 2015, where I was a victim of an attack. And I'm not going into it in this video because we're keeping it light and upbeat. But basically I went into the full backstory of what happened on my Facebook, so you guys can check it out. There was so much more to this I've put into my Facebook post, which you guys can see. So I just continued through 2016 and I really wanted to give you some Halloween tutorials and I remember doing them and I just could not see. I just couldn't see. And it was such a bizarre scenario because I remember my, my actual lights cut out because it was on this funny thing where I had to go to a shop to pay for my lighting, it was so primitive. But I, <laughs> I had it, my lights cut out. I had to ring my friend Jordan and halfway through, I was in the lion makeup with the full prosthetics. So I wrapped my head up like with a head a headscarf and a mask and I went to the local shop to get my lighting thing. And I was like, Jordan, please come and help me. I'm in a complete pickle. I've got prosthetics on my face and I need to get my lights back on to finish this video and to get on my evening. So I had to run out and I just remember thinking like, okay, this is the world telling me to stop. The lights have gone off mid prosthesis. I'm going to have to stop. And that was a sign that I totally ignored because I think two days after that happened was the first time I was taken to hospital with my eyesight. And it just got into a spiral of madness. And instead of actually just taking the time to heal and taking about six months off, which is what all I needed really, I kept pushing through and my work was showing it wasn't as great as normal. I wasn't being my normal self. I was not as happy and upbeat as normal and loads of people noticed it but I think a lot of the people around me were interested in me as a character and not as a person so they weren't really having my back um and then on top of that there was even more stuff going on where it came to my creativity because I had just lost my friend Sinestra and it was just going in this like weird tailspin where I felt, as I explained in the Sinestra video that I posted, that everyone was becoming um, almost like hypnotized by a fantasy of online instead of actually caring about people as people. I started to notice so many of my friends were going into this weird sort of mindset where they were just paying attention only to what was going on for you via the lens of social media. They weren't experiencing people as people. And I was like, why are we all becoming like avatars? Why are we all becoming like these 
characters with no soul, with no like human interaction. We've got no responsibility for when our friends are not doing well. We don't care if we say something hurtful to someone. Like I, I was thinking like, why is everyone behaving like this? But I really wanted to bring a new aesthetic. So my aesthetic at the time was inspired by my kind of colorful looks. I wanted to do a blue look and I wanted the blue to kind of be like a sort of a video game character. So I wanted to make everything look sort of super Photoshop, super kind of artificial, super sort of high definition, sort of that era of the trend makeup, but put into a sort of machine that made it look like an avatar. So that was my inspiration behind doing the blue look and then all hell broke loose because I couldn't see for, the, for six months and I wasn't able to do my work as a makeup artist. So this is the missing era look and this is to give some backstory about what my inspirations were and what exactly happened because it was just a, a whole ordeal. <laughs> I just try with new ideas, I try with another thing, and then I sort of work out a, kind of like an umbrella term that I can call something. And that's how I create projects. So when I go into my new project that I'm working on at the moment, which is the Team Baron, it, we've got a company under Team Baron called Innovations. One of the projects we're working on at the moment is going to be, it's gonna to be totally outside of what people expect of me. But once I get that umbrella, then I can start growing from it. It's almost like the other way around, really. It's like I plant seeds, and then when I get a concept for a seed, I can start playing with the imagery, playing with the concepts, playing with the names, and things starting to form into their own thing, which is exactly what happened with Agiprop. So I, I'm a creative, and I love rewarding creativity, and we've done a little mini, mini competition so far on my channel. I'm gonna be bringing you a couple more, but I really want you guys to show out with your creativity. I want you to turn every negative experience that you're going through in this pandemic and make it into a creative project, because this is gonna be the solution. I really, really, really want you guys to experiment with new materials. I wanna see new makeup. I wanna see new color. I wanna see a mix. And I am thinking about bringing back Perfect Androgyny in a new format. So Perfect Androgyny was a channel project that I created. Perfect Androgyny was a channel I created many years ago, which was a collaborative channel focused on trans people, people that identify differently to their assigned gender. And it became the most successful LGBT collaboration of that time. And I actually, just before we stopped, because we were working with World of Wonder, I wanted to really navigate through that and do a show with World of Wonder where we could do like auditions, we could do like a mentorship thing. Because at the time, I was actually looking at doing something called Perfect Androgyny Generation Androgyny, which was gonna be like the sort of precursor to the non-binary movement. I never got to do that because it was the same time that I ended up hurting my eye. But I think now it's probably time to bring it back. I remember doing the auditions for that and it was so powerful to see so many hundreds of people sending submission tapes and wanting to be a part of that channel. And when I went to DragCon and so many people ran around crying, it was like incredible. So I'm thinking about doing something at the moment. So little bits to go. Okay, so let's go in with a mini reaction because obviously everyone has been enjoying my reaction videos and I've temporarily taken them down. We've got some news coming and I can't wait to share them. Yes, yes, yes. But the one I really wanted to um, react to is the Michael Jackson legendary tutorial, because guess what? That video has been re-uploaded probably about 20 times. I thought it would be fabulous to react to that video because it's been such a long time since I did my transformations and they're such a part of my brand and so many people always go back to me and say girl you're the queen of transformations bring some back and I'm I can't bear doing them I just find it so sort of like something I would do as a teenager and now I'm not a teenager I think like my god can I not just do my environmental stuff and just be cool why do I have to do the YouTube thing again why do I have to keep on doing this stuff forever more <laughs> but okay I'll give you a reaction instead let me show you the backstory whilst I wait for this to load because when I actually wanted to do this video, I was working on the book Agitprop, which was going to be my first coffee table book of makeup, but each page on the book was meant to actually tell you a story about my views in terms of the media. So I've added some on my website because I actually did view the pages before I actually had this eye injury. Um, and Agitprop was going to be like all about animal rights. It was all about how people use animals in advertisements or how bullfighting still goes on in the world and things like this. So I really wanted to create pictures and pictorials that told a story, but I wanted people that follow me on YouTube to still be interested. So I thought if I did my transformation series as the blurb, 
and I kind of made it into, you know when people make a face out of mini photos? So it's my face, but made out of mini photos. And I took all of the pop stars and actresses and people that I looked up to, the Andy Warhol superstars, Grace Jones, David Bowie, all these people, and I transformed into them and then made my face out of those faces. It would tell a story in a story. Um, and it would be a little bit more artistic than just doing a youtube -y thing. So I thought if I just did that as the blurb, it would be really cool. As you guys know, I didn't get to do that book in that format. It became Agiprop, the website and the new business. So everything comes to a different conclusion, but thank God it did. Cause my God, if I was doing transformation in 2021, but anyway, Michael Jackson was one of the last ones I did. I did so many that I didn't put online because it was more so for the book. It wasn't for a video, but let's go in. Okay, so this, actually, I used to love that brush. I don't know where it is. And we've sped up quite significantly. So I remember using, at this time, NW25 on the face, which was a little bit pale and a little bit yellow for me. But basically, what I wanted to do is I wanted to reconstruct the nose. So what I do normally with my transformations is I use a grey, and the grey really replicates shadow. Now, when I was looking at Michael's face, I wanted to do a, a, a rendition of him when he was paler because I didn't want people to feel that I was putting on a darker skin tone, even though I, I'm not. I didn't want people to perceive it like that. So I used a paler picture when his nose was smaller. That was my inspiration. It wasn't to be shocking at all. I just didn't want to offend people. So I slowly start to build up layers of highlights and I, I treat things like this as a water painting. So I do a sort of like a wash of color first, put the highlights in the high points where things stand out. And I always wanna make things look flat if I want them to look close to the face. Cause when I'm straight on, I want them to actually, let me pause this just quickly at one minute five. I want people to see them as an illusion. So when I'm sat there in front of the lighting, it just blurs into one. I don't want it to look like it needs Photoshop or needs to be twisted. And also because I've, I've noticed in his new photos he's got like i do when there's a flash photo it makes your top lip look a little bit more prominent so i shaded that in and i also shaped in the chin shape which i believe he had surgically done to look a little bit more like diana ross but i could be wrong so with the contour i actually th wish this was a bit tweaked because if i turned the actual um if i corrected the lighting so the blacks were black i think you would have seen a little bit more the detail because the light on the cheek and the chin is brighter than the middle of the forehead here. So that was done deliberately because I wanted to lower the lighting of the face. With Michael's face, he's got a very thin face in his in his later life. Um, obviously, we know a little bit more about that story now, but what I wanted to do is exaggerate the, the darkness where I got quite a flat plane. He does not. So I cut in that shape here quite significantly and went around and then up. I also noticed that his eyes were very hollow and slightly downturned. So what I wanted to do is cut in a little bit of the contour um, with the eye as well as in the face. And as you can see, as I blur in the powder, I'm using just the powder to set everything through so I can build up more of that light darkness. Now, I didn't show in the actual video here, but on the perimeter of the face, I used a contour really to change the planes of the face, make it look a little bit more 3D. And I also touched my hair and I used a little bit of black in my hair. So ignore that. Now he used to use a very strange, I think he had tattooed makeup on at this time. So he actually had a tattooed lip line, tattooed eye line, so he wouldn't have to get on. And he had a wig glue on. So he had lots of uh, makeup that he woke up in. So I tried to replicate what I saw in the picture more in an exaggerated way. I also used a bit of iridescence around the nose to really dramatically change the shape of the nose and lowered the lower, the lower part of the lashes. With the actual brows, I wanted to actually go back in and really sculpt them up because they are quite uplifted brows. And this doesn't show the final version I did because once I saw this, I saw, no, I didn't do that quite right. So I went back in and I actually cut through with actually a matte liner by Ilamasco. It's one of those old pen liners that dried matte and it made it look so much better. Now, Michael Jackson's one of my idols and I absolutely looked up to his music and his skill set and thought he was exquisite at dancing and singing and writing music and everything that he did. I wanted to do one that wouldn't offend people, even though I would prefer to have done a younger one. But I know sometimes people get a bit fussy when you're olive skin, don't do someone with olive skin if they're not the same as you and blah, 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 blah. So I didn't want to go through that route and I really wanted to play it safe. The wig, I actually still have that wig. I've completely transformed it. I just use my own hair underneath and that's a Balmain jacket, which I approve of. But I would definitely do it a little bit different today. I think if I did it today, I'd use a lot more darker tones. 
It did look quite dramatic in real life, but I don't think it picked up on the screen, but definitely one of my favorites. So I guess that's really all I can say in this video at the moment. I'm so happy to be back. This is a long vlog, as I mentioned at the beginning. So hopefully you liked it. I'm going to now chill out because it's getting hotter and hotter under these lamps. <laughs> Hopefully you are all doing okay. Please be safe in this mad time. Be creative, do something inspiring, and hopefully you can share it with me with the upcoming projects that I can't wait to chat about. Check out my tutorials with Nyx and Retrieve, and don't forget to check out Miri. Miri's um, GoFundMe will be linked below. And yeah. All right, guys, thank you so much. I can't wait to see you in my next video.